Well, hello everybody. It is coffee time. Or tea time. Or lemonade time. Or whatever time. But it's time to talk about the Lord and His goodness. Tonight we're supposed to have a couple of special guests. It's Stephanie and Daniel Hewling. Um, we're going to talk about Noah's Ark. And we're going to talk about the incredible mercy that God had on Noah and his family and that he had on us to not destroy the whole entire human race. Um, I was reading about what God thought about Noah and he told him, he called him a righteous man. Hey Angie. Um, he was the only one found righteous in that day that believed in God and he also believed God it had not rained for ever it had never rained and then all of a sudden God says I want you to go build a boat an ark I want you to build it big enough and he gave him all the dimensions everything about it and told him to get started on it well he tried to warn the people around him what was going to happen there was going to become a flood that would kill him, but they had never seen rain before. The water had come through the ground to water whatever and, and to give them water, but it never rained, so they didn't really um, believe Noah, and they laughed at him. And he built this ark. It took him, he and his three sons, a hundred years nearly to build. Once they got it built, the people were still laughing. They brought the animals in, um, seven clean animals, uh, that kind, and two unclean animals. They brought them in, they went in, and then God shut the door. The point that I feel like I'm making tonight is that it is time for people to realize that the Bible says, as the do days of Noah, so shall the Son of Man, the return of the Son of Man will be, and that is really drawing nigh. And we've got to remember that there's people around us that don't know. We have to warn them, even if they don't pay attention to us, they think it's just a pie in the sky with us and we're crazy. The world became so wicked in Noah's day and so much violence that the Lord regretted making human beings. And he had mercy and saved Noah. And he's going to have mercy once again. And save the ones that sent his, that accepted his son. Which is Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you today, that day is approaching quickly. I know that people don't understand this. And I'm going to explain something that I felt like the election uh went south but I also realized that in order for God to fulfill his word every nation will rise against Israel and that could not have been if if things hadn't turned out like they did I also realized that um, the peace treaty is put aside for the Antichrist to deceive the Jews and whether we have another chance of making it a while longer or this presidency continues, we don't know. But we do know the signs are all around us. The world is getting weaker and wiser in some ways. Physically, I feel like we're getting weaker. People sit at a computer all day. I know I do. And wiser because they're they're learning so much, but never coming to the knowledge of God, the Bible says. Stephanie and Daniel should be joining us in a minute, but before they do, we'll bring on some more people. Angie, share this. Tracy is busy these days. She can't join us, but anybody that wants to join me on Coffee Time, that wants to give a testimony about the goodness of God and brag on Jesus... You're welcome to contact me through Messenger. I'll be more than happy to uh, to have company on this because it's fun to talk to other people while you're 
talking, bragging about the Lord. And I know that Matthew and Justine, Melody, and Leo, and myself, went to the ark in Kentucky, and it was so massive. Um, we went in, we, we went around and saw how they lived and where they might have kept the animals, and it was all interesting, but when we got to that door, the door that God shut, that no man could shut, and no man could open once he shut it. And the Bible says that. It says that God will open doors in our life that no man can open. And he will close doors that no man can close. If we believe in him, if we trust in him, he can do anything. Just like the angel that came to Sarah and told her she was going to have a baby and she was old. She was in her late 80s and Abraham was in his late nineties and this angel said the Lord is going to give you a child and she started laughing and the angel said is there anything too hard for the Lord is there anything and she named Isaac Isaac because the word Isaac means laughter but there's nothing too hard for the Lord and if he can take this little country girl woman a woman and he can brag on his son through me and maybe draw somebody to him if the Lord be lifted up he will draw all men unto him and if he can do that through this ministry and it's such a small mustard seed type thing then praise God I've done something right in my life because our righteousness is as filthy rags in the eyes of God um, even Noah's was, but Noah didn't have something that we have, and that's the blood of Jesus. Once we have been washed in the blood of Jesus, our righteousness is through God's righteousness. He forgives us, and we are clean forevermore. Um, what shall we sin? God forbid. But if we do sin... We have an advocate with the Father, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord, according to the word of, of God. So, I urge you that if you don't know the Lord, just ask him. Say, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Somehow, show yourself real to me. And he will. He did to me. A lot of times we have to hit rock bottom before we do give over to uh, letting God have the steering wheel in our life. I did that at 36, but have I failed? Of course I have, uh, just like all of you have. But we've got to remember that he loves us, and this is a, a learning to walk process. Um, being sanctified as the ministry, as the, uh, as the Pentecostals and, and the Bible speaks of, is not you get down on your knees and you get up and oh glory you're healed you're pure you're holy and you never touch this or that again some people might have that experience that is not my experience mine was the hard way i had to uh, fall down and get up and fall down and the lord would lift me up and i realized how much he loved me and that caused me to fall in love with him because once we're saved we don't start out loving Christ like he loved us, and we'll never love him like he loves us, but we learn to love him because of his mercy, and it's renewed every day. But I really think that the story of Noah is important, and I think that it's something that we need to think about these days because we are living in the last days, whether we realize it or not. We are in the last days. I mean, the the signs are all around us. You can read them in Matthew 24. Um, it just describes the world and how it is. It's so evil. The Bible says in the last days that men will call evil good and good evil. And all you have to do is turn on the news and you can see what they're calling good that is pure evil what they're trying to teach in school to our children. 
um, is puree. Yeah, it's going to hit the South last, but it's coming. It is coming. We have to stand for what is right. We have to hold fast to our faith. And we have to serve God. We have to show the love of God. That is how we serve God, I feel like. If people can't see the love of God in our life, then we don't have God in our life. But when you see someone who is kind to others and it thinks about other people before themselves, that is the love of Christ because you can't be that way. Human nature will teach you that when a child is born, they will cry for what they want, which is natural. But as they grow, they are selfish. They want their own toys. They don't want to share. They have to be taught how to share and how to care about others. If they're never taught that, then they grow up to be selfish human beings that nobody really can stand. But Jesus loves the unlovable, thank God, or he couldn't have loved me. I remember my brother said that when we were young, that I would, uh, we'd start a club and I'd have to be the president. I don't know why, I don't remember why, but I do remember wanting to be the president all the time, so I don't know. It That was a selfish thing. I didn't want to stand back and let somebody else do it, but that's a child. That was the child in me. I try now to think about others. I don't always do that, but it's a growing process. We're never going to become perfect until he that is perfect, we're in his presence. Right now we're looking through a, a, a glass that's dim, but one day face to face with Jesus, we will understand. I believe the knowledge that we've not required on earth, accumulated on earth about God and about the mysteries that we seek to, to find out in life, that once we are in his presence, it will just be known to us. It will be like, of course, I wonder why that happened in my life. I see now, Lord, I understand that. Oh, and I understand this, how, why you did this. It's hard sometimes people get hurt and they don't understand why God allowed it. Sometimes, well, God does. He, he does put us through tests. He doesn't, he does not cause pain in our life, but sometimes he allows it, just like he did Job when he told Satan, have you considered my servant Job, because Job was a man that loved God, so he, he allowed Job to be tried, and he said, you can do anything to him but take his life, so Job was cursed by his friends, what did you do to God, why? You know, his wife even said, why don't you curse God and die? His children died. They were all killed and wiped out in a whirlwind. He lost all of his uh, flock. He lost his friends. He lost everything. And Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. And then the Bible goes on to read about um, Job was like, Lord, why did you let that happen? I'm just going to paraphrase this. And the Lord said, Job, where were you when I created the world? Where were you when I parted the oceans? And he just goes on and on and on to show us just how small we are and how he does know best. Did he make Job happy in his life after that? Absolutely. He restored everything that Satan had destroyed in Job's life. God gave it all back. And now Job's with his children that died earlier, and he's with his children that he had after that. And that's what's going on now. We as Christians are going through a world that's not like it was when we were growing up. It's so different. Our children can't get out and ride bikes all over town. They can't trick or treat in any neighborhood and feel safe. Those days are gone. If you let your children outside, you probably need to be with them. Those, um, those are sad times that we're living in. 
but God has allowed us to live in this time for such a time as this, and it could possibly be to draw us close to God and to show us how much we do need God. It's also an exciting time because we know that this generation possibly could bring uh, the return of the Lord back, and that's the greatest thing. We're trying to tell everybody that we see, everybody that sees this video, whether it be around the world, in the neighborhood, wherever, because it'll be on YouTube later, we're just trying to let them know that the flood is fixing to happen. But it's not going to be a flood this time. The Bible says the earth will be destroyed with fire and brimstone. That's going to be a horrible thing. And it says, as the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And when uh, he, when Noah was getting on the boat, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage, uh, business as usual, just like it is now. It's business as usual. But we've got to understand that um, it's going to be like that. In that twinkling of an eye, the Lord, the trumpet of the Lord will sound, and every knee shall bow, and every eye shall behold the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's not coming back as a baby in a manger. He's not coming back to be hidden out from um, King Herod. He's not coming back uh, to be worshipped and adorned as a baby. He is coming back with all his great glory, and he will be back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And that is going to be a great and terrible day. There was a song one time um, I had written. It's called uh, Come to Jesus Now. And it was saying, Come to Jesus, don't you think on that day? He'll wipe, I think it says, He'll wipe his tears. As he's, he's turning people away that didn't accept him, but it's going to hurt him too. I, I know, Angie, power and glory, that's right. I don't remember the, the song's on YouTube. The song is on SoundCloud under No End to Love Ministries. But it was a song I'd written for my cousin because she didn't believe in God. And since then, she totally does. Because her son um, fell off of a very high falls, and it was Fall Creek, no, Fall Creek Falls, um, Ozone Falls, and they were really ready to salvage his body parts and, you know, call it quits, and she wouldn't do it, and she asked me if, if we would pray, and I said, yes, we will, but I, she said, I've been praying, and I said, Denise... Have you asked God in your life? Have you asked Jesus into your heart? And she said, no. And I said, well, he is a God of regulations and rules. If you belong to him, the Bible says in the New King James, or the King James Version New Testament, that you can ask anything in his name and he'll do it. And it says where two or three or more are gathered in his name, he'll be in the midst. Facebook. Angie called Steph and tell her how to get on this. Would you? Because she doesn't know how. So she did. She asked the Lord to come into her heart that night. She called me back and told me that she did. And I said, okay, we're going to believe. Because Alex was just like basically dead. <clears throat> All of a sudden, he started getting better. And it happened over and over. Just every day, he was getting a little bit better. He's at home. They said he'd never walk. He'd never, you know, he'd never be the same. If he did live, he would be a vegetable. Well, he's not. And, you know, they were ready to, they were asking Denise, just sign these papers and we'll, we'll keep him alive till we can get his body parts. And uh, this was up in um, Knoxville, UT Hospital. So she didn't. Hey, Nikki. Tell Stephanie to join face, get on Facebook on my page and 
send me a request and I'll let her join us. She's wondering, wondering how to get on here. But that was one miracle that God did, and I really, I no one believed Alex would live. I mean, he just fell back on his back. He busted his back up, broke it, busted his head. It was just over for the boy. And uh, God healed him. And God is a miracle worker, and he's the same today, yesterday, and forever, the Bible says. And I know one time I asked him for a miracle, and I got it, but I didn't really need a miracle. I just needed a blessing, but I got a miracle. I'll tell that another time. Well, actually, as James would say, if you want to go on Graham's Coffee Time on YouTube, you can look up all these testimonies of mine and Tracy's and other people, and it tells that when I wanted a miracle and I got it. So, I think Stephanie's getting it now. She's about to come on. But don't turn the Lord away. And you know, it's just like, it's like a kid taking medicine. It's like us. We, we repel what we don't want to deal with. We like to be comfortably miserable but then when we allow the Lord to take over our life when we get to, when we do it our way so long till we fall flat on our face which is what I did then we're like if there's anything left in my life it's yours once we surrender our will to him then he works in our life and he says in Romans 8 28 he will work everything all things together for our good no matter what it seems like, no matter how gloom the day gets. I know one morning I got up and I was going to go through a horrible thing that day. And I opened my Bible up and it's Proverbs 3, 5. And it said, Lean not to your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all thine heart and all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. And I can see now looking back I can see how much better my life is than it ever would have been that way. I can see God moving. I can look back and see where I was carried through things. I can see where he led me through. And I can see where he walks beside me. And he does you all too if you ask him to come into your heart. I know that a lot of y'all are Christians. I don't know where Steph's at. Let me... Let me send her something. Nick, you want me to add you? Well, anyway, we're just going to go on with this. But Noah was a righteous man. He was counted righteous. There's a few things in this that I looked up about Noah that's pretty interesting. Um, what the Bible says about Noah. What God said about Noah. Is this. Genesis 7 says the Lord then said to Noah go into the ark and you and your whole family because I have found you righteous in this generation and also seven of every kind of bird male and female to keep their various kinds alive throughout the earth I was reading something last night about Billy Graham and uh, he was talking about Noah and the ark and he said that that it had taken him almost a hundred years to build the ark. That everybody laughed at him and, you know, they, they really thought the man was crazy. It'd be like now if the Lord told us to build an ark and we started building an ark and getting ready to leave, well, we better be building our ark. And our ark is the blood of Jesus. It's a cross. And we better be getting on board because time is drawing near. And even if it was a hundred or a thousand years from now. What matters the most is we, if we're right with God when he calls our name. Because one day he will call our name 
and we need to be ready. And how do we get ready? We apply the blood of Jesus to our life. And that is trying to do the right thing and keep his commandments. But the two commandments that he gave in the New Testament cover the ten that he gave in the Old Testament. And that is this. <clears throat> That the love we love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, strength, and mind. And the second one is like unto it. We love our neighbor as ourselves. And remember a while ago when I was talking about loving other people? Well, that is a commandment. That, those are the two new commandments. And Jesus said on those commandments, the law is. That, I mean, it covers the law. You know, people talk about tithing. Well, tithing, Jesus said, uh, Moses taught you to give a tenth, and this is good. But he owns it all anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat's getting dry. I don't guess Stephanie and Daniel's going to be on here. So, they probably can't figure out how to do this. So, anyway, um, I guess our time is just about up. we got about three minutes. But I just ask you once again, if you've not talked to the Lord, talk to Him. If you don't know what to say to Him, just tell Him every morning you love Him. <coughs> read a verse of the day. Even if you can't read as many chapters as you want. I know, Nick. At least read something. It's like going to the table and we eat and we get full and it lasts us a while till our next meal. Well, the Word of God is like that too. If we don't eat and absorb that in our mind and heart, then we're not going to grow spiritually. And if we don't grow spiritually, then God can't use us like He could if we were mature. And being mature is thinking of others. That is when we arrive, when we are thinking of others. And when we think we've arrived, hey, Davy, then we're really never going to arrive on this earth. We're not. Until we're in the presence of the Lord, we're never going to be where we should be. Davy, you'll have to go back and watch some of this. And share it, guys, because this is a good word. I mean, it's brought to you by a moron, but still. Hey, I will stand up for the Lord, and I will proclaim His name throughout the world. I'm not ashamed of my faith. I'm not ashamed of my Savior. And hey, Stephanie wants to be next to the oldest daughter, my second child. Come on, girl. Let's do this. Hey there. We've been talking about Noah. What are you guys doing? Hey, we're good. You are? What's Daniel up to? Yeah. Everybody's saying hey. Uh -huh. Nikki's saying hey, Steph. Angie's saying hey, Steph. Hey. What are y'all doing on vacation? Yeah. Have y'all been to the ark? You have, haven't you? Uh, yeah, we have. What'd you think about it? We lost the ark. What did, did What did you think when you went through there and saw that door? Hey, Jeanette. Wasn't that amazing? Uh, yeah, that was... To know he shut that door for them? I mean, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah, that was pretty neat. What's Daniel doing? Is he there? I don't know where he's at right now. <laughs> but he's... Well, Stephanie, give us a little testimony. <laughs> Well, um, I was just going to let you know the Lord's been speaking to me about um, 
well, actually, Luke chapter 19 about the parable of the of the talents. Uh-huh. And hang on just a second. Let me see if I can. Don't turn your thumb that way. Turn it back around. Yeah. This has got an echo in it somehow. Um, but anyway, um, the, especially the part where um, it says that a nobleman went, in, a nobleman went into a, a distant country, and um, he called ten of his own bond servants, and he gave them ten minas each. Um, he so he gave each one ten which was equal to about a hundred a hundred days wages and he said buy and sell with these while I go and then return and then it says but his citizens detested him and sent an embassy after him to say we do not want this man to become ruler over us so when he returned after having received the kingdom he ordered the bond servants to give the money who had given the money to be called to him that he might know how much each one had made by buying and selling. And the first one came and said, "Um, your mina has made 10 additional minas. And he said, well done. And because you've been faithful and trustworthy in a little thing, you shall have authority over 10 cities. And then the second one made five. And then um, another one came and said, here is your amina, which I have kept laid up in a handkerchief. Um, and, it, and he did that because in verse 21, it says, for I was constantly afraid of you because you are a stern man. You pick up what you did not lay down and you reap what you did not sow. And so he said to the servant, I will judge and condemn you out of your own mouth. You knew that you knew did you that i was a stern hard severe man picking up what i did not lay down and reaping what i did not sow then why did you not put my money in a bank so that on my return i might have collected it with interest and so what he had had was taken away so we have so okay what I think is we have to look at what God has given us. He has given us all 24 hours in a day. He's given us all abilities uh, to do different things. One thing that he has given us all, um, we have the same power. If we are Christians, we have the same power in us that raised Jesus from the dead. Because that's what the Bible says. Um, he's given us authority and he's given us power. Um, and if he's given us those things, should we not be investing those? Should we not be using them? I can hear you a lot better than right. you did. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, basically it, basically the Lord said to me, I feel like he's saying, if I have given you these things, should you not be using them? Don't keep them to yourself. You need to be using them. And in this parable, the servants were investing them. But um, that was a way, they, that's how they used them. They used them. They put them to use. They didn't hide them. They didn't keep them to themselves. The one who did had it in a handkerchief, and he was he was uh, condemned for doing that. So God has given us power and authority, and if we don't use that power and authority to draw out the things that he's already given us in the spiritual realm, then 
whose fault is that? You know, we can't fault him for it. We have to, if he's given us something and we don't use it, um, we have to, we have to look at ourselves and ask, why am I not using what God has given me? That's true. Um, it is so hard, so difficult, you would not believe, to get somebody on here, and I don't know what the problem is, to get anybody on here to brag on the Lord or to give a testimony or anything. It's just people don't want to go to the trouble. They don't want to take time. They're too busy. It's like I've heard every excuse I can, and I've made excuses for not doing it too, you know. I really have, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this until the Lord tells me it's over and takes me home or whatever. And I would love to have people give their testimonies what God's done in their life. That is so important because how are people going to believe unless they hear a testimony? You're overcome by the word of your testimony. You know, we need that. We desperately need that. And I'm asking any of you that, that hears this to message me, whatever, if you'd like to, to get on here and, and tell what God has done. I praise God for what he has done for me, for sure. Yes, Davy. He has really blessed Davy Lester. He is doing really good. I'm so thankful and proud of him. We've prayed for years for you, Davy. And Angie said, I think the key is planning ahead. Well, how much of a notice do you need? Ten minutes is enough. <laughs> well, we wish it was, but with all these kids we're wrangling and getting home from school and stuff, it's... I know it is. Where are y'all at? Are y'all at home or are you on vacation? No, we're vacation. we're away. Okay. We're out of town. Okay. Um, I know planning ahead, Angie. So. Uh, pencil me in one one Tuesday night, but yeah, I enjoy that, and people enjoy hearing two people talk. They just do. It's 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 more interesting, and plus, I'm not that good a speaker, and I kind of feel like uh, Moses did when <laughs> on a much smaller scale, of course. So. <laughs> Well, you guys have a good time, and, you know, I just uh, hope that we've said something to please God, but you're right about the talents, you know, but the greatest thing we can do is love other people. That is the greatest. Yeah. That is God's work. That it is, and he's, he's put it, he, the Bible says in Ephesians that he shed his love abroad in our hearts, so we have that love inside of us, and if we don't do anything with it if we don't use it to love other people then you know we're there can be no multiplication if we don't use what he's given us. I remember the little song this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine hide it under mm -hmm. a bushel no I'm gonna let it shine and that's yeah. what we gotta do by loving other people and caring right. about other people that's exactly why yeah. Well, Stephanie, y'all have a good vacation. Thank you so much. Okay. Anytime Daniel's off on Tuesday, we would love for Daniel to join us as well. And you. Okay. Okay? Okay. Just thanks let me for coach. having us. Well, thanks for coming on. Okay. Let me say a prayer. No, Stephanie, you say a prayer for everybody that's listening. Uh, Lord, we just thank you, God, for your mercy and grace. And Father, I just pray, Lord, that you would open our eyes and help us, Lord, to just um, know what you have given us, God. Help us to be receivers of all your goodness and mercy and dispensers of your love and kindness, Father, and your uh, mercy to others to draw them to you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to see you next Tuesday, same bat time, same bat channel. <laughs> I sing that song. You do? What song is that?
Oh, this little light of mine. Duh. All right, guys. I love y'all. Share. And you can catch it on Graham's Coffee Time as soon as Tracy puts it on there. See you guys. Love you.